All people are when you obey God's word that was built by slaves, reality. and I watch my daughters. There is nobody that respects women more than I do. There is a lot of crisis, a lot of that. This. Hi there, Michael here. So, I was getting ready for bed just moments ago. I just brushed my teeth, was looking through my news feed, realized it was Easter, so now it's after midnight, and, uh, you know, I realized just moments ago that I've never heard a non-dual Easter talk before. That doesn't mean they don't exist. I'm sure there are some great ones out there somewhere. I've never heard any of them, though. So I was like, is it, what, what is there to glean from Easter from a non-dual perspective? Is there some, is there some gold in there that would be fun to look at? And so I just headed back to the back house real quick and started, started recording because I feel like there is, I feel like Easter is obviously the story of resurrection. It's the story of Jesus coming back from the dead. But there's these like strange things in the story. Like that part of the story where the disciples see Jesus and they don't recognize him. They think he's somebody else, like the gardener or something. And... That's odd, right? (laughs) Like if your friend just died a couple days before uh, and then your friend shows up, you'd think you'd recognize him. Um, So that's kind of an odd detail of the story. Uh, Another odd detail of the story is that he can apparently like walk through walls and stuff. He just kind of would like enter rooms without... There's like weird things about what his body seem to be able to do after resurrection. So he's not recognizable. Some people think he's somebody else. <clears throat> His body doesn't follow rules anymore. Anyway, let's not go too literal with it. The point that I think there is to find in there, or a, a point, an interesting point, is that whatever Jesus's body was before the crucifixion. It had apparently changed somehow. Right? It either didn't look the same or didn't behave the same or something about it had changed. And that begs the question, who was resurrected? If Jesus was a a person that's a, a like this static identity of a body. If there's a somebody that was in that body that everyone called Jesus, that did all the miracles and said all the beautiful teachings and all of that. And if there was a, a consistent somebody in there, who was that? And that's a question Jesus would ask sometimes. He'd look at his disciples and be like, who do you think I am? (laughs) Ah. I love that. I, this is the first time that thought has crossed my mind. And that's why I'm laughing because I always grew up thinking that that was like a, uh, Like, okay, you know I'm here. You know Jesus. Like, the Jesus part is taken for granted. I'm this guy here. Uh, Who is this guy? Is this guy like a really special guy or like a kind of a special guy? Maybe not that special of a guy. (laughs) But he's like, who do you think I am? You think I'm... And he doesn't even even try to tell them because... (laughs) Because if you know the answer to that question, 
you don't need anything else. Once you know the question to who do you say I am, and and you you know that it's funny. It's who are you? You are the only thing that is. <laughs> you are this. You are God. You are myself. You are the reality, the seamless reality in which all of us live and move and have our being. That's who you are. Under the stories, underneath the beard, the dust on the beard, underneath the the skin and the and the specific shape of that wrinkle in the skin today. Cause that's gonna change tomorrow or in the next moment as you smile and then as you frown. Well now the face is different. And oh if we get even down into the scientific understandings of what a body is and how it changes and how we know about how atoms are constantly switching out and cells are constantly dying and being reborn and there's there's no static anything to a body. Bodies are these constantly moving, constantly evolving, changing patterns of energy. So who's there? In this pattern of energy, who is the Jesus person, this character? Who is the guy? Who is the, the one speaking? Is there a somebody, is there a separate somebody in that body other than the body itself? Is there some little ghostly, like when the Pac-Man character eats the the special whatever they are in the corners and all the ghosts kind of like the eyeballs are just moving around but their bodies are gone is there some kind of like floating eyeball-y soul solely thing that's in there where is that what is that exactly we can't find that anywhere doesn't seem to weigh anything or have any uh, ways of being detected or sensed directly in any way we just kind of like imagine it So, who is this Jesus that raises from the dead? Who would you say that he is? Would you say he's some guy? What does that even mean? That he, the body, well, the body, even in the story, in the gospels, the body had changed. Like bodies are always changing. So it's, could you, if it was just the body, and it wasn't recognizable and it didn't behave in the same way. Why would you even say that that was the same thing? That the resurrected body was the same thing as the pre-crucified body. We have this idea of the somebody that's in that pre-crucified body making its way through death and out in this new body. And who is that? And what if that's at the core of the whole thing? Who, whole thing, meaning all the suffering that we go through, all of the seeking that we go through, of trying to fix our lives, of trying to experience wholeness and health and enlightenment and salvation connection and love what if at the core of all of this is that question who do you think that you are because if i'm if i'm michael if i'm like a little guy in this body that everybody keeps calling michael and there's just somebody separate in here then yeah i that guy's gonna die and then i've got a problem you know and so I better figure out how to solve these problems of being this separate guy and all the things that this separate guy wants and needs. And, oh, God, how am I going to not die? It's, how am I going to not get the coronavirus? And how am I going to, like, it's all of a sudden there's lots to worry about, about tomorrow. 
But Jesus kept going around to me like, who do you think I am? Look around. Just look at the birds. You don't have anything to worry about. There's nothing to be worried about because nobody dies. Because there's a, who, this idea of these separate somebodies are just ideas. They're just stories we tell that are very useful stories for building societies in which we can collect taxes and having relationships and all sorts of fun games. So we can say, yeah, if that, if that money has Caesar's head on it, give it to Caesar. Who, who is it? <laughs> Whose do you think it is? It's all connected and it's all part of the same fabric, that same ocean of reality. And when an individual body has that experience of dropping some of the stories for a second and just being the isness that is underneath all bodies that gives rise to and as all bodies. There's nothing to worry about because the sense of separation is seen through. It's experienced as the illusion that it is. There's no separate guy in this body surviving moment to moment. The body keeps changing. The thoughts keep changing. The happenings and the circumstances, all the phenomena keep changing. And there, we like to think that there's some sort of unchanging me under all of this that is experiencing it. But there's not. We can't find it. But our whole world is built on that. So it doesn't take kindly to it, to pulling apart that story. If you're not careful, you get crucified. Sorry, that sounded like I said Jesus wasn't being careful, but remember I'm saying Jesus wasn't even a real separate anything. <laughs> so, you know, pick your pick the heresy that you would like to be most angry at, with what I'm saying. <laughs> If you can hear me, if you can have ears to hear, it's that the guy that we think of as Jesus was really the Christ, the all, the spirit of being, the movement of the ocean that is everything. So Jesus was resurrected, of course. But what was Jesus ever but a story? Don't mishear me. I'm not saying that there was no literal man historically named Jesus. Maybe there was. I think there probably was. But what that man was, was an ever-changing pattern of the universe that continued to change after that body died. What happened to that body? Did it decay or did it come out of a grave and change a bunch more? Did it not going through decay before it evaporated into space? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't really care. Because the power of the idea of resurrection, the power of Easter, in my perspective, is it illuminates the impermanence of even death. illuminates 
that all of our stories about life and death are just stories. And that which gives rise to life and death, the one infinite this, has nothing to fear from death. It's just a story. Because bodies, the body that was listening to the beginning of this podcast is dead. Now it's a different body. It weighs a little bit different. It's got some different thoughts, some different memories. That body that was is gone. Oh, and now it is again. That which was is not any longer. Death, life, death, life. Rebirth. The rebirth thing is cool because it, it does have an element of what was, right? Like the body now, maybe you had a couple of hairs fall out of your head, but you're probably not that many hairs from the beginning of this podcast to now. <laughs> you know, it's similar. The body's probably similarly shaped. You probably haven't completely lost any limbs during the listening of this podcast. I hope. So there's new out of the old in a way. There's like a a rebirth every moment. That which was no longer is, but somehow it gives birth to a new reality that is fresh every single moment. Completely novel every single moment. So there's my Easter sermon for you. (laughs) You are not who you think you are. If you think you're Dave or Kamala or Hans, I'm just saying names now. We play a game with our family sometimes where we go, what's your name? And then you just have to say a name. So I was kind of... Just playing that with you there for a minute. Beatrice, if you think you're Beatrice, really underneath all of your personality and your uh, constructs, well, then you've got some stuff to worry about. Because Beatrice isn't going to last forever. But you, on the other hand, you, that reality that holds itself together as that body right now that keeps that blood pumping through those veins. You, that reality that knows how to have your nervous system communicate with your brain. Like, you know, you Beatrice, you, the idea of Beatrice, you don't know what, how to do that. Right. You don't know how to move. Can you, how do you figure out how to move your finger right now? You just know how to do it. But you can't consciously tell me how to do it. Like, well, you, you just do it, right? It just happens. That's everything. It's just happening. There's nobody doing it. Except the one thing that is. You. This. God. The universe. The infinite. The void. The Tao. So in a time when so many of us are so afraid, maybe this Easter idea, this story, can remind you who you really are. The breath within the breath. Happy Easter, everybody. (laughs) 